Hello and welcome to episode 95 of Ready to Mosh. I'm Gem G and with me as always, the pumpkin to my spice, Mr Kev P. Uh, we're going all Halloween themed, aren't we? It's Halloween all year, but you know, feeling festive. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So today we are carrying on in our build up to Derby Alt Fest, which I think by the time this episode goes out will be next week. And in this episode, Kev is having a chat with Jacob from Recall the Remains, who are playing on the Wednesday night of Derby Alt Fest on the Chosen by You lineup. Unfortunately, I was unavailable on the day that Jacob was available, so Kev did this one alone. Because you were busy cavorting? I was indeed. But there is a great exclusive in this. Mm. So yep. keep listening for that. So here's the interview. Okay, so this week we've got a uh, very special interview as part of our Derby Alt Fest lineup. We have got Jacob from Recall the Remains. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Yourself? Yeah, I'm all good. That's great to hear. Uh, thanks for coming on. Oh, it's all right, man. Thank you for having me. So I think the first thing we need to do is basically about the band. Tell us how it started. Oh, so with the band, um, when it's coming up on this lineup, especially when I joined, I used to just work. They were a four piece before I joined um, and they carried on like that. There was a five piece beforehand, then they went to a four piece. And then I worked with three out of the four of them. Me being a bassist beforehand, I just literally just asked them. And I was just like, I would love to try and actually do some vocals. And they were willing to just actually take me on for one song. And then literally, they kept me on like near enough a probationary period. They never, for like three months, they didn't tell, they were there just like, we want you to learn this song, and then this song, and then this song make lyrics for this and i was like am i in the band they were like we don't really know yet maybe so yeah <laughs> that's kind of how I, like the band starting like with this current lineup anyway that's quite an evolving process yeah no, like honestly like i think it was like after like four of the band practices and like two of the and like did like two of the gigs with them as well like my drummer was like it's looking good, mate. It it's like you. It looks like you're going to be accepting this band, and I was like, oh, I hope so. I've already spent my money to come to the like to two of the gigs now. And I suppose, kind of like maybe with the band and you, kind of like as you join later, kind of like what your influences are. Oh, uh, so with us especially, I don't know really about much of the bands, but um, with us, we just we all have our own influences when it comes to music and then we just try and like some of us will share the same bands that we like and the influences but what we try and do with like record the remains is like we like to take our individual influences and then merge it together to get our sound and it's a great sound as well we've seen you live we saw you at uh uprising this year thank you very much oh yeah oh uprising was brilliant that was cool that was a cool festival to be fair yeah it, it, it was a really good really good festival and we, I think we actually saw you in the uh, press area as well because we, we were doing press at that one. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you would have probably seen me around. And then you could have also... Do you remember, like, the kind of foyer part next to the press um, room? Yeah. I went... We were just chilling in there for a bit. And I'm pretty sure I napped in that area as well. <laughs> so I just got tired and I was just like, I'm going to have a nap. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. So, songwriting process then for you guys is it kind of lyrics first, guitar first? You know, do you get drum patterns down? Guitar. Um, normally, it's a guitarist that will come up with like they'll come up with a riff that they like, and then we'll all kind of sit down and then like discuss over like the riff, a part to the riff that we like, parts that we don't like, and then like make car changes from there. So. Like I said, we'll more often try and sit down after they've written the riffs and everything so we can go through it. My drummer will be like, especially when Elliot writes, um, writes a song, he likes to put the drums in there and make it impossible for my drummer to play. <laughs> so my drummer just like, I'm changing that and all of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's normally guitars, all the instruments will get done first. And then as soon as they're finished, I'm like, OK, now I'll put some lyrics to it now. What do you think has been your most memorable performance so far? Oh, that I'll got like if if any, it's got to be when we played Bloodstock last year. The fact that we got asked three days before we were actually supposed to play, so we got asked on like the the Wednesday, and we're playing a Saturday, and 
not having like having three days to kind of unpack that we're going to be playing Bloodstock. Yeah, it, it was absolutely insane day because I got to like go side stage for Malevolence as well, and that seeing like that amount of audience from their perspective was insane. So I was just like, yeah, no, Bloodstock was by far up there. But that is such a hard question to ask. <laughs> yeah, we we really wanted to see you at Bloodstock last year, but we was like so exhausted from the heat. It was just absolute murder. Honestly, mate, like we had so, like um we don't we don't hold anyone against it, even when like we're like there's been like weeks of notice and everything like that. But for that one, we had people didn't know we were going to be playing. We were told three days beforehand, so we only made a post about it like three, two days beforehand. And then, yeah, we were also on the same time as Ginger on the main stage. So we were lucky enough. I feel very lucky enough that we had the amount of people that we did have. We could have performed to like 10 people on that stage. I I was lucky enough that we were, I was over the moon that we got the audience that we did, to be honest with you. So I suppose for for the band, kind of, like, and I suppose for you in particular, actually, what songs would you kind of recommend for somebody that's new? Oh, I'd say if I had to pick like top three, I was like, Fairfield has got to be one because it's just it's groovy, it slams, and then it adds like that kind of lull that we like to add. Um, first inversion because that was the first song I actually did with the guys as well, and then. Um, Personally, I would say Life Taker because Life Taker is my like is one of my favorite ones. So out of the three, it have like I said, Fairfield, first inversion, Life Taker. You know what? You you've kind of nailed like some of my favorite tracks. <laughs> they're, they're like some of my key ones as well. Um, you know, like Empty Wards, Fairfield, uh, Life Taker, The Night Will Bleed. The Night Will Bleed. No, if you like, if you are a sucker for solos, Night Will Bleed just del- like delivers on it both because you got. There's two solos, and then you've got a dual solo that goes into it. I don't think you could really ask for much more. No, it's such a great sound to it. Such a great sound. And I suppose at the minute, a lot of bands seem to be doing kind of collaborations. So is there somebody you'd like to perform with? Oh, what, to do like a song or to do a gig with? Uh, either. Oh, God. Um, oh, that I would love. Do uh, you know what? I would absolutely love, if I had to pick two, out of an obscure one, because I was talking about this with um, someone at our most recent gig that we did. The obscure one would be Print. Okay. I think it I think it would just be absolutely hilarious to actually get Print onto a metal song. And to <laughs> no one to know. Literally just be like, just drop a song, and then it's just be like, feature, like featuring Print. And then they'll just be like, wait, Print? Like, Print, Print? It's like, yeah. <laughs> But um, a serious one would be like Phil Bozeman from Whitechapel. I've absolutely loved his vocals for years now, and to if he was to, able to get onto it, like if we was able to get him onto a track, I, I'd I'd near enough say my music career is done at that point. <laughs> Everything's achieved. I just I would just yeah I just need I just need to like tour around Europe, America, twenty thirty times, and then I'd be I'd be done. I, I kind of half expected you to say um, "Thy Art Is Murder." I would. Do you know what? I would love. I would love to be able to have CJ in a song because he is one of my like. Obviously, all the controversies aside and everything like that, he was one of my. He is still one of my favorite vocalists. If you take away all part of that, but obviously, as things have come about and that. I feel like the safer bet is Phil Bozeman. Without him being a second choice, it, yeah. It, yeah, it just... It's, it's definitely the least controversial. Yeah, exactly. So, like, same with, like, any kind of, like, even Slaughter to Prevail, Alex, is just a monster on track. So on either, what, either one of those three would just be amazing. So what we're going to drop into now is a quick fire round. Okay. So whatever comes into your mind, okay, just go for it. What's your favourite pizza topping? Oh, jalapenos. Yeah. Oh, interesting choice. I don't think anybody's ever said that. No. <laughs> I do I do love a spicy pizza. You know what? I would I would typically want to go for Spanish ones because I do love my spice. So the spicier the better. Anything else on the pizza is just second choice. Jalapenos are always the first thing that I put on a pizza. 
Who's the f- most famous person you've met? I would have to say it's got to be um, the basis from Barry Tomorrow at this current point because I asked, like we I I literally just randomly did a TikTok before we played Bloodstock, asked him what he was doing. We we're playing literally before his band, and he actually turned up. Like didn't tell us, didn't tell me ahead of time. He literally just turned up, and I was like, "Well, this is this is really fucking cool." Oh, that is, yeah, that is, that's something special. I didn't tell the band either. I literally just like you just saw this pink haired dude come into the stage, and then I was like, "No way, you turned up." My guitarist looked at me and then saw who I was going to, and he was like, "What? What is he doing here?" I was like, oh, "I asked him to come." Oh man, I, I love that. That's that's really nice touch as well. Um, you know, for them to just kind of you know to come out and come watch you guys. I would say, like, without it being the fast fire one, I'll, arguably, I would also say Jared from Head PE. Yeah, I got to speak with him, and he was uh, he's an absolutely lovely dude. Absolutely lovely. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Steak. Oh, good choice. Yeah, steak. <laughs> it's just so good. How's it done? How how do I have it done? The most cooked I'll have it is medium rare. Like anything beyond that is just that. It's keep it away from me, please. <laughs> A man after my own heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, if it's an actual steakhouse where they actually do steak, I'll go blue air every yeah. day. But medium rare is the maximum I'll go. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a sucker for a blue. It's oh, absolutely love it. You've got to, you've got to find the right place to do it though. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. The the best ones about Argentinian steakhouses, amazing. Oh, I don't, I'm gonna have to try and find one. I'm gonna have to try and find one. Uh, is there a bucket list venue that you'd love to play in? I'd, oh, there's um, Underworld at London. If any of them, I'd love to try and play at Underworld at London. They've sit like they've had so many bands that have been my favourites as well that have played there. So to actually play there as well would just be absolutely brilliant. Uh, what song do you wish you'd written? Do you know what Reign of Darkness? I would have loved to write that song. <laughs> ticks all the boxes. It do, it uh, it ticks all my boxes. Like it's got filthy riffs. It's got a filthy breakdown and a solo. And again, what more do you need in a song? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't need choruses. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the last band you watched live? The last band I watched live, off, um, Black Tongue. No, sorry, actually. I know that like big band, bigger band, yes, but Mad's Banner yesterday. I went up to Shrewsbury and I watched some of my mates play in Shrewsbury. So, like, the last one that was on was Banner. And he might be just a solo artist, but Mike is an absolute lunatic. He, I'll tell you what, he, I've got a video of him literally just darting. He would just bounce from side to side of the stage not caring what he hit and then he literally just darted up the one side up to the top of the venue and then ran straight back down and i was like yeah i was just like what the what was the last meal you cooked um i literally just cooked um a steak bait like steak and bacon cooked in teriyaki sauce of rice oh wow bit of a culinary master no i wouldn't say culinary (laughs) just random stuff that i like to throw together but it, I, I like it, so it's all that matters. What's your most favourite venue that you've either played in or watched in? Um, played in, I'd have to say for the memories, it has to be the Gifford. The Gifford in Wolverhampton is pretty much where we we became more, more and more polished as a band. And then also having the events organiser, Brett Hall, just kept pushing us and pushing us to just keep going better. So. My favourite venue out of them all has got to be the Gifford. Love the place. And what's your favourite venue that you've watched something in? Um, oh, the Mill in Birmingham. I thought the sound quality there doesn't matter where you stand in because it's still quite a small room and it's just the sound there is phenomenal and there's plenty of space, which suits me quite nicely. Yeah, I, I totally get that. It's, it's, I, I need a, a little bit of space at a gig. I, do you know what? The more space that my band members can have from me is better for them because the amount of com- I've had my base, my bassist doesn't complain about it to me. He has done, but anyone that asks when I'm windmilling or headbanging and he gets hit by my dreads, it hurts him. So if I if I could preferably for him, if I could stay away from him, 
that would be amazing for him. Right, we'll move back into some of the more serious questions now. So, how did it feel to get added to the lineup as a chosen by, as a chosen by you? But oh, it was honestly brilliant because we didn't think like we didn't think that we might actually get chosen to actually play it. And then when we saw that people cho- like a load of people chose us to actually play it, was just phenomenal because we like to try and keep our expectations low just in case of like anything goes wrong, we can still then have a good time because we're expecting it. But for people to actually, for that many people to vote for us to play, it was just brilliant. It just like, it warmed my heart. It warmed my heart. Yeah, it must be a great feeling to know that people are actually saying, look, this is who we want. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's that. It just makes it seem like all the effort that you're putting into it and all like the effort, the money, the time and everything like that, it just makes it, more and more worth it to see more and more people recognizing your band coming to the gigs everything like that it just makes it so much better to kind of have that kind of acknowledgement from people so yeah yeah, just having that is just a brilliant feeling and i love it and are you gonna have a chance to watch any other bands at derby alt fest while you're there now the problem that i have is is that i won't actually be watching any of the bands okay uh, do you know, I'll explain because people are going to have to find that eventually. So when we actually got confirmed for it, because I didn't, I basically didn't check the dates and I'm not actually going to be there because I'm going to be in Hungary in Budapest. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Luckily, the like the guys, we've all decided, we've, we decided um, months ago now that we were going to continue doing it. We've selected, like we've selected a vocalist that we all, but was com- like we were all confident enough in to actually step in for me and everything like that. So everyone's still going to get a brilliant performance from the guys. But unfortunately, yeah, no, I'm not going to be there to actually see any of the bands. Unfortunately, which I'm actually really gutted about. But yeah, we haven't even made we haven't even made we haven't made a post about it yet either. We were just going to leave it. <laughs> but I can't lie. I can't lie about that. Well, that that is a revelation. I was genuinely not expecting. Yeah, no, so if, like, if people are seeing this beforehand, I'm really sorry that I'm not going to be there, but we were, we were kind of wanted to leave it to a surprise on the day. I was going to wait until the day, and then I was going to go on our story, and then just literally just put me in front of, like, a landmark in Budapest. Like, so I don't think I'm going to make it today because I'm here. Wow. That's a total shocker. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, no, it's going to be... It's going to be the first time that the guys have performed with me, eh, with obviously a standing vocalist and everything like that. But it's like we love playing Derby Alt Fest. We love actually working with Liam from Unearthed, and we like playing the Hairy Dog. So I was just like, guys, you need to carry on going to do it. I know you guys want me to be there and everything like that, but it's midway through my holiday. If it was like if we were on the Friday or the Saturday, I would have actually optionally flown back early to try and be there on time but um yeah it's midway through the holiday so i was just like i can't really leave to then try and come back it's, it's a logistical nightmare yeah it's a logistical i like do you know what i've already said that just being like if it if anything like that was to happen i would always try my best to try and come back because i just think it would be the funniest story <laughs> like could you imagine me just about making it and just like the intro's playing, are you seeing me dart through the door? And I'm just like, I've literally just cut off the plane. <laughs> and I'm here. I've got jet lag. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's get some pits going. <laughs> exactly. It's like if I can run here, jet lag, I'm gonna see some pits going. But yeah, no, it I would generally I'd do that because I just think it would be absolutely hilarious to do. <laughs> exactly. And I, I'd have to make like if I didn't make a video about it for either TikTok or for the band as well, then it, I feel like the guys would call me out on it because they would just be like, that's a waste of opportunity there. And I was like, I know. I know it is. I'm really sorry I forgot to do it. But Oh, wow. But yeah. That... Best laid plans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, so what are the plans for new music then? Um, so there, there was Fairfield, Empty Woods, Life Taker all released this year. Yeah, 
So does that mean something big's on the horizon? It is. Um, we have spoken about it a couple of times, so it's fine to speak about. But we are we're in the last stages of actually getting the recordings done. We've finished three new. We've pretty much finished three new songs now. They're not going to be released as singles. So what we're going. So what we've done this time is that we wanted to release three songs to kind of get a taste of what we're doing now, and then those three, like Fairfield, Empty Woods, Live Taker um dark path night will bleed and our hell are all gonna actually be chucked onto an album oh excellent so we're gonna have our first album and then we might like release like little sneak and sneak clips of the new songs but we're not going to be releasing them as standalone singles they'll be released at the same time as the album so people just don't expect what's coming because they're I would I would love to say that these the songs that we released this year are a taster to what we've done for the next for these three coming, but that would be an absolute lie because I would I honestly say they're mass I would say they're massively different. We've taken a different approach with these three. We wanted to try new stuff as well, so we went down that path. And what kind of release date are we looking at for a, an album then? We aren't setting a release date yet because we. One thing that we've learned before, as much as we would love to get new music out there as quickly as possible, we want to make sure it's backed properly. We want to make sure like we have a solid PR campaign and we would love it like and to be able to obviously supply to people as much as them obviously supporting us. We would like to try and get like a solid merch bundle as well. So we aren't setting a date just yet until at least either we've got the money for it all. It's already in place. Everything's done to where we can just go from there or at least until we have the majority of stuff there and then we can just start teasing it and everything like that and then we can do all the merch bundles, everything. So, But maybe like March, April time is say like a good estimate for it. Yeah, sounds a solid plan. The The problem with kind of like doing, doing it too quickly and trying to get stuff out is it just gets missed. It doesn't, you know, nobody picks it up. Exactly. And it's just like after the kind of set and um, like the success we have, like the first time Entwood got played on Kerrang and like Johnny Doom actually was just like, oh, like actually kind of introduced the song as well. So it was like at that kind of point, it was it kind of all hit us that it's like we can't rush into this release. It's our first album. So we want to try and make it as like as solid as possible. So we'd like to try and get everything done beforehand instead of start like start teasing everything and then still waiting for everything to come back as well. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. So yeah. So with some of the new stuff that you guys have been working on, does that mean any of that might sneak its way into Altfest? Not at this current point. Um, for anyone that has seen us, I'd say like in the last year or so, especially live, would have actually heard these songs already. They might have changed up a bit. The titles might change a little bit as well because we're not going to side those until it comes to actually until we're happy with a title. But they would have already actually heard the songs already. We've we literally asked people as well. We was like, tell us what you think about this song after we played it. If you like it, we'll get it recorded. And that's what we kind of went for. So we've been lucky enough to see you guys before. Yeah. But for people who haven't, what can they expect from your set? At, like, just so much energy. Like, I just, me and the guys move around a lot. We don't really like to stay still at all. We like to also have a laugh as well. So you're going to see, like, you might see my guitarist, like, doing a like doing a solo in The Night Will Bleed. I will look over to him and I'll just be like, mm, yeah, it's an all right section. We'll move over to that. Yeah, so we'd like to have a laugh and then just... We always get told that it's like a very big sound. So just be prepared to get hit by a wall of sound. Uh, so it's a great description, actually. <laughs> I, I can say firsthand that is a great description. Yeah, we like to, as we like to do it, it's like we like to just either build it and then just carry on building it and then just not stop. Or we like to just hit straight in like with Fairfield to where it's just, oh, what the hell just hit me? We, we touched on the uh, merch earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, that you were you were thinking about, you know, for the yep. the album. But I mean, the current merch is great, and is there going to be merch there for everybody to get? 
what for so we've still got some bits we've still got some bits of like the Fairfield and the Empty Wood shirt but because we've been wanting to focus on the recording we haven't got any new stuff yet but we still got obviously that the album stuff and the merch bundle stuff is completely separate but we still have a life taker shirt that as soon as we get the money for we can release and it is the single artwork of life taker which pedley artwork absolutely blew the like blew out the water for these designs as well like left it in his capable hands and do you know what i don't think i've really had we've had anyone as professional come back to us give us kind of like a drop box and goes here's the influences i had this is why i picked this everything like and give like a free word kind of description of this design and we're like mate you've blown this out of the water like time time and time again so we are gonna we haven't asked him yet and i've said this on other interviews but we are gonna ask pedley to do the album it do the album art for us as well oh that sounds like it'd be great yeah no i feel like it's like we've started get like over the years we have we I mainly only work with the people that we've worked with previously before because we like to have a rapport. And I feel like we've gotten someone now that kind of gets a lot of the kind of um, kind of like the images that we want to go for. So we're probably going to carry on working with Pedley Artwork for a long time. Yeah, just somebody in that right headspace that you know you yeah. guys absolutely click with. Like, don't get me wrong, there are many other phenomenal designers out there like you've got cindy um you've got cindy designs as well that has done like phenomenal artwork for like jobs of a cowboy and everything like that i'd love to be able to work with him at some point as well but to kind of keep it all the same and not looking different we're going to stick with pedley for a while so final question then yeah uh live date so there's derby alt fest yep then there's a i think there's a couple more after that so um, this goes i think this goes out on the ninth on the ninth so at this i know this week we have like on we've got birmingham and it's our first time in scotland so if this is going out on the ninth, we've already played scotland now we have derby alt fest i would love to say that i can remember the rest but it's in the calendar i, I can't really just go away from this and then go on it but we have so many so we've got Hammerfest, for example at the end of the year which First time working with Harry this year. Absolutely lovely dude. We're going to be going down um, south again to go and play Hammerfest. And we've got so many other things in the works as well, like planning for next year that I can just, I can lose track of them so much. If my drummer was here, <laughs> if Tony was here, he'd be able to list you off the date, where they are, what bands are playing. He'd be able to list you all of that. Unfortunately, I am very much of a fish brain. <laughs> if it's any consolation, I guarantee you, you're, you're not the first member of a band to go, we've got something, but I can't remember where it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll openly admit it, mate, just being like, I will just be like, I always look forward to all our gigs and everything, but I'm not, always, I'm not always the best at remembering stuff. Right, so for everybody out there, go check out Recall the Remains, check out all the latest new stuff as well, because it is absolutely incredible. Thank you. And Jacob, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you too. Thank you very much for having me and asking one of the questions that we weren't even going to answer about being a Derby Hope, which anyone do listening, please like go on the Wednesday, go throughout the whole week because the team at Unearth have worked so hard to keep boosting it every year that this year they've kind of They've blown it out of the water this year. I don't know how they're going to top it next year without having bands that are like play at download re- like regularly or playing O2 Academy shows. But I'm sure Liam's going to figure out something to then top this year as well. So make sure you still go. Importantly, go and check out my band as well because the guys are still going to perform it brilliant. And the standing vocalist, people would have seen him perform before. He's known around um, Unearthed and. He is a phenomenally he's a phenomenal vocalist and he's so lovely as well. Thanks a lot, Jacob. No worries, man. Thank you for having me. So we hope you enjoy listening to that chat with Kev and Jacob. Obviously, if you are going to Derby Alt Fest on the Wednesday, make sure you check out Recall the Remains. If you're not going to Derby Alt Fest, give them a listen if you haven't listened to them already. And if you see them playing live anywhere, go give them a watch.
We're going to have some more build-up content between now and Derby Alt Fest, so keep in touch on our socials to see what else is coming up or what we've done. They are on Instagram, Twitter and threads at Ready to Mosh Cast and Facebook, TikTok and YouTube at Ready to Mosh. So we'll be back soon with another episode for you. And in the meantime as well, don't forget to give us a like, share and a review and all of that. Make it stop, Moog.